Hello, this is Dr. Christy Patton Lokes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. We are looking at a series of videos for Thermodynamics 1 for chemical engineers, and we are in Chapter 4 looking at entropy. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at uses of entropy, and it's just a starter set. So you're still not going to really feel like you fully understand entropy at the end of this lesson. But first I want to look at the way it's used to define some new energy properties. Now if you'll recall, we started by defining internal energy, and that's something that's used in, say, your chemistry classes, your physics classes, where it's just the energy that's contained inside the material uh, due to the physical constraint of the way the atoms are put together, the temperature that it's at, so the vibration of all the constituents of the atom. Anyway, every molecule or every substance contains this internal energy. And then we defined, based on that, enthalpy, which is another form of energy, but it's defined to be U plus PV. Well, we've got a couple of more of these now that we have entropy in our set of tools, we ha can define Gibbs free energy. So Gibbs free energy is defined as H minus TS, that enthalpy minus temperature times entropy. And H is recall U plus PV, so G is also U plus PV minus TS. Now this is the Gibbs free energy. We're gonna come back to this uh, much more later but I'm gathering that you've probably seen this because you've had chemistry classes, right? And when you discuss that equilibrium uh, constants for reactions, the log of K is defined to be negative delta G over RT. So you've run into this. It's in tables that you've looked at and so forth. And then there's also another one that's the Helmholtz energy, which is U minus TS. And it's not really used directly too often. We do actually use it in deriving a lot of other things that we use in the application of thermodynamics, but we don't use it directly very often. But Gibbs energy is going to be used when we talk about reactions. Another great application of entropy is the second law of thermodynamics. Now, We've already said that the way that entropy is defined, the entropy of the universe cannot decrease. And the entropy of the universe is going to be unchanged by any reversible process. And therefore also it will increase for any irreversible process. So we often write that as that delta S for the universe is greater than or equal to zero or the total delta S for if we have a uh, system that is uh, isolated, so no information is going in or out from it, that would also have a delta S greater than or equal to zero. Greater than zero means rever irreversible. Equal to zero is reversible. And less than zero is impossible. And this is the second law of thermodynamics. Now we also have defined delta S in terms of the integral of dq over t. This requires a concept that's known as being a heat reservoir. A heat reservoir is a constant temperature source or sink for energy. So remember the cookies that we looked at in one of our earlier videos. I bring that cookie out of the oven and set it in a nice cool room. The size of the room compared to the cookie is quite large and so the heat lost by the cookie is not going to change the temperature of the room to any significant degree, right? If I were to cool something by, you know, running it through 
a pipe that was immersed in a lake. Whatever heat is being given off the material by the material and the heat is not going to change the temperature of the lake to any significant degree. Those are going to be constant temperature heat sources or sinks, okay? And the idea is that the reservoir is going to be so large that its temperature is not going to change in any measurable way, no matter how much heat transfer I have in or out. And so therefore, the delta S for that reservoir is going to be the change in heat transfer per temperature. But if the temperature is constant, then I can lose the integral. And I end up saying that delta S for the reservoir is the Q of the reservoir divided by the temperature of the reservoir, that being constant. And that's going to be a really important feature so that we can go ahead with a further study of entropy and the second law in a useful, meaningful way. Now, I could continue talking about this a bit more, but they do such a great job in this PBS video on um, the misunderstood nature of entropy that I'm going to recommend instead that you watch that and come back and we are going to begin looking at the Carnot cycle, which is our final tool in the toolbox before we can start using the definition of entropy to begin looking at how we can solve problems with it. Thank you very much for your time.